Hello and welcome from SGT University to all our future dental surgeons or would be doctors of teeth. I'm Dr. Radhika from the Department of Oral Pathology, Faculty of Dental Sciences, SGT University. I'm sure you all future doctors of teeth might have definitely wondered at least once in your lifetime that after all, when, where and how do teeth develop? From where do they suddenly come in the baby's mouth? And then the baby wants to bite almost anything and everything he gets. Understanding a subject becomes easier if we try to learn it inside out. So let's first understand the histological intricacies behind the development of these miniature masterpieces. Here we begin the story of tooth development or odontogenesis. Tooth development begins in the mother's womb. When the mother is five weeks pregnant or the embryo is five weeks old, some ectodermal cells show condensation to form two band-like structures in the region of the upper and the lower dental arches. These bands are called the primary epithelial bands and they divide into two divisions, the dental lamina and the vestibular lamina. It is on the dental lamina that the future teeth will form, while the vestibular lamina turns into the buccal vestibular space, that is, the space between the cheeks and the teeth. Twenty small swellings or placards as we call them can be seen on the dental lamina. These placards correspond to the 20 future deciduous teeth. While the permanent teeth develop on the lingual extension of the dental lamina which is termed as the successional lamina. However, it must be noted that the permanent molars develop on the dental lamina itself that is on the posterior extension of the dental lamina or posterior to the deciduous molars. These placards now start proliferating into the underlying ectomesenchyme and assume the shape of a bud. This bud is actually the enamel organ which will eventually give rise to enamel of the tooth. Tooth development though a continuous process but has been divided into three stages. The bud stage, the cap stage and the bell stage. These stages have been named after the shape which the enamel organ assumes in each stage. The enamel organ will form the enamel. The underlying ectomesenchymal cells condense to form the dental papilla and the dental papilla will eventually form the dentine and the pulp. While the cells surrounding the enamel organ and the dental papilla constitute the dental sac. The dental sac will form the cementum, periodontal ligament and the bone. So the enamel organ, the dental papilla and the dental sac together form the tooth germ. Let us now begin understanding this tooth development with the three stages. The first stage is the bud stage. In the bud stage as we just discussed, the enamel organ assumes the shape of a bud and this bud contains peripherally located low columnar cells while centrally located polygonal cells. Just below this bud which is the enamel organ is the dental papilla and surrounding the enamel organ and the dental papilla is the dental sac. The dental papilla and the dental sac will divide and differentiate more as we move to the further stages of tooth development. Now due to the differential proliferation of the cells an invagination of the epithelium occurs which changes the shape of the bud into a cap. So we come to the cap stage of tooth development. In the cap stage, three layers of cells can be seen. The inner enamel epithelium, the outer enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum. The cells of the inner enamel epithelium are tall columnar and they line the inner invagination of the cap. While the cells of the outer enamel epithelium are cuboidal in shape and they line the periphery of the cap. Now in between the inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium are polygonal cells. These cells synthesize and secrete glycosaminoglycans. Glycosaminoglycans are hydrophilic and they attract fluid from the underlying ectomesenchyme. 
This fluid, when enters the cellular layer of the enamel organ, separates the cells apart. These cells are now pushed apart but are still attached to each other with desmosomes. This gives them a star-shaped appearance. Hence the name of the layer, stellate reticulum. The fluid in the stellate reticulum gives it a cushion-like consistency. Hence, it protects the entire enamel organ. Now we come to the third stage of tooth development, the bell stage. At about 14th to 16th week of intrauterine life, the cells at the margins of the enamel organ continue to divide while the inner invagination of the cap deepens further, assuming a bell shape. Thus the name bell stage. Bell stage can be divided into two stages, the early bell stage and the late bell stage. In the bell stage, we can see four layers of cells. There were three layers in the cap stage only, the inner enamel epithelium, the stellate reticulum and the outer enamel epithelium. Now, some cells between the inner enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum assume a spindle shape and form the fourth layer which is called the stratum intermedium. Stratum intermedium plays a vital role in the nourishment of the enamel forming cells. The bell stage witnesses two very important events, histodifferentiation and morphodifferentiation. Histodifferentiation refers to the histological differentiation of cells into specialized types, while morphodifferentiation refers to the shape the crown will eventually form. Now, the cells of the inner enamel epithelium send signals and secretes growth factors to the underlying ectomesenchymal cells. As a result, the cells of the dental papilla now differentiate into odontoblasts. These odontoblasts then lay dentine, after which they send signals to the inner enamel epithelium cells. The odontoblasts now secrete dentine and in turn induce the cells of the inner enamel epithelium to differentiate into ameloblasts, while ameloblasts will now secrete enamel. Thus, enamel can only be secreted once the first layer of dentine has been laid down. And this whole process is called reciprocal induction. Now we come to the late bell stage. This stage can be witnessed when the embryo is 18 to 20 weeks old. During this stage, the incremental deposition of the enamel and the dentine takes place. First of all, the organic matrix is deposited and then the mineralization process continues. This is how the entire crown is made. Hence, we saw the stages of tooth development which eventually led to the formation of the crown. I hope we all have understood the process of odontogenesis. See you next time. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. Thank you and all the best.